I made some videos on how to integrate your Astro Gear into a local area network using a Raspberry Pi 3 or a Raspberry Pi 4. I used a small uh, display for this purpose which shows the current Ethernet address and operating parameters of the Raspberry, but this display is no longer supported. So I felt like doing an update and I simplified a little bit how to install Indie and all the fine details on the SD card of the Raspberry. You can do this both with a Raspberry Pi 3 or 4. I did it in this case with a Raspberry Pi A, which is a free, with a small passive USB hub connected and a nifty power on power off switch. Again I used a small Adafruit display and I'll walk you into the installation of all these gadgets in the following video and I'll show you how you can benefit from this. The benefits of using a Raspberry with Indy are twofold. Number one is you can integrate your focuses, your cameras into a wireless network or you can attach your USB free devices to a powered USB free hub and then bring all the data into a local area network where you have no limitations on cable length. Have fun! First you have to write an SD card image. You need an older Raspbian Buster OS Lite without graphical user interface and this needs to be written to an SD card of at least 16 gigabytes. The little gear tool in the firmware installer allows you to set the most important parameters like the host name of your Raspberry. You can set the username and the user password. You can enable the secure shell, which is extremely important because you want to access your Raspberry without a display. And you can also select a network and the proper keyboard, which is also important. Once you've done this, you can start writing the data onto the SD card. This takes a little while, so we will abbreviate this process here. And while we are waiting, uh, I would like to point out that most of these settings were done using the Raspi config tool in the previous video, and this is no longer necessary. Next, we can insert the SD card into the Raspberry and find out about its networking address. The Raspberry Pi A only features wireless, therefore I went into my router and I located the Raspberry and copied the IP address here so that I can access the Raspberry via the secure shell. On Windows, you need a terminal program like PuTTY. Here on Linux, I can simply open up a terminal and type SSH pi at the given IP address. I'm asked, being asked for the appropriate password. And now I'm inside the Raspberry Pi. The next thing is I go to www.indilip.org and I copy and paste all the installation instructions from the Indie homepage for the Raspbian Buster operating system. I can copy those commands using Ctrl C and on Linux I can paste them into the terminal using Ctrl Shift V into the terminal window. So what we see here is that now we have inserted all the necessary commands for installing Indy. And next we will install Indy with all the drivers onto the Raspberry Pi. Denote that the Raspberry Pi runs Buster Lite. There is no graphical user interface. It's really meant to be as lightweight as possible.
So here we now copy the first line to install all the Indy drivers. This takes a while and I have abbreviated this process again a little bit. It will take longer when you're doing it. However, in the end, you have a Raspberry Pi running an Indy server. However, we need to do something else. We need to log in again into the Raspberry using SSH and run the Raspi config program. The reason is that we need to enable two things. First of all, we have to enable a console auto login. In this case, the Raspberry starts up automatically without asking for a login. And that's what we want. We want to run our Indy server automatically. And we have to enable the SPIE interface in the interfaces section, because this communicates with the tiny little display. Here, I also activated I2C and I disabled the login shell via the serial interface. But this is not necessary. However, it is important to enable the auto login and the SPIE interface. Everything else was done beforehand. Let's see how we can add a little display. The display is necessary to see the IP address of the Raspberry Pi and to see whether it's operating properly. I used a small Adafruit Mini Pi TFT with 135 times 240 pixels. This can be bought by electronic stores nearby that carry Adafruit equipment. So, this is widely available, it's very cost efficient, and it's a great little helper, which gives you more confidence in running this setup. In an earlier version of this video, I used this display and I embedded a kernel module that directly displays a console. This does no longer work, and therefore I had to revise these videos. So what I'm doing now is, I'm not installing a kernel module, as described on the Adafruit homepage, but rather than that, I'm installing Python support, and I wrote a little Python script that displays the IP address and does everything we need in order to run our Indie server. So the PyTFT goes onto the headers, in this case on a Raspberry Pi Zero, and first of all, you have to install the Python installer package, pip. You can copy this from the homepage of Adafruit and by Ctrl-Shift-V, you can paste it into the secure shell, into the console. Of course, your Raspberry Pi has to be connected to a network. Pip is not part of the used Buster Lite Raspbian image, therefore we have to install it first. But after that, we simply go through the Python installation instructions one by one. We install the Python package for the little display, plus some reinstallation commands, which I abbreviated here in this video. Again, Control C copies the line from the browser and control shift v pastes it into the console you also need to install a certain font the deja vu true type font but again you find all the instructions on the adafruit homepage The next thing is, of course, then to download my Python script, which displays the IP address and some parameters of the Raspberry Pi in operation. The Pilo library and the NumPy library are also needed. But once this is done, we are set and we are ready to finalize this whole procedure here. And also the 
custom Python script makes use of the little buttons on the side of the PyTFT. These are used to shut down and reboot the Raspberry Pi. All these instructions can be found on the Adafruit homepage and you'll find the link also in the comments to this video. Next, you need to get two scripts that I wrote. Both are more or less simple and they do start the Indie server. You can customize one of them. And the other step is that you also have to install the Python script that runs the display and the two buttons on the mini Pi TFT. These two scripts need to be copied onto your SD card into the home directory, home slash pi, and one of them has to be modified. You have to find out about the indie driver names for your devices. This can be done on the indie lib page. You select the device. For instance, a Zoo ASI camera reads as indie ASI CCD. You open a script called start of indie and there you can insert the name of your drivers if you have multiple devices you can insert a number of driver names but these have to be taken from the indie lip home page control out control x saves this file from the nano editor and you have to make both this and the other python script that was provided in the download section. You have to make these executable by typing sudo chmod a plus x and the name of the file. This has to be done for both files. And here is the last one. The Python script that runs the display and starts the Indie server has to be executed at startup. For this purpose, type crontab e into your terminal, go to the bottom of this script and type add reboot python free home pi run indie server dot pi and don't forget an ampersand in the end. Save this and your script will be executed at startup. And this is it. So I made a little hole in the Raspberry A case. You see how the system comes up. This can take up to 20, 30 seconds. And in the first few seconds, you don't see an IP address, but after a while, of the connection to the network, the IP address shows up as well. And here we have connected the ASIT SWO camera to k on the Linux. I'm connecting to the Indie server. They're both in the same wireless network. And in a second, you'll see a rather skimpy image of me with the wide angle lens that comes with the RC120mm. And I've repeated the same exercise in Windows. Again, I used KStars as a client. And in this case, I connected the Canon 1000D. It has a 150 millimeter lens in front of it. And in this case, I'm taking a photograph of my cheesy yellow submarine watch in my office. Also, again, via VLAN. Okay, I hope you found this useful. Thank you very much for your attention.